Hamish, Mary Louise's youngest son, and this is my partner Sue Ad Lee. And it's been quite a wonderful time this last year or so in lockdown because we've been spending a lot of time with my mother and father next door. So there's been a lot of babies in the last few years in the family and there's been a production line of lullabies to go with that. And they're brilliant. Beautiful. And uh, mum was recording them herself on her phone, but I just booked her into Ian McFarlane's studio in the old laundry studios in Glenfinnan. And we got her to record the whole lot. And then she recorded another 10 songs basically recorded two albums in five days and <laughs> Ian's wife Ingrid sent us a message just going they sent him a video of her playing saying she's putting us all to shame here she's a professional musician and a composer and she's always written loads of music in the house when we were growing up and she always writes it out beautifully and she's always really loved composing and, and Scottish music as well and I think the lullabies were oh, quite a, a sort of a logical thing for Mum to get into because she was writing music, Scottish sounding music. She's grown up with lullabies. She's loving her art and doing painting and all that kind of stuff. And so she does a painting for each lullaby, and then gives them as a gift for 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 the first birthday. It's lovely, isn't it? It's lovely. And actually, you know what? I've just realised I've forgotten is that um, back in my little piano room at home, I have your mum's um, beautiful saw pop tune that she wrote for my 50th last year. And it's it's a gorgeous wooden board, three-piece board, and she's painted it and wrote me a tune as well. So I think it was the two of us that that were saying to mum that she should get them recorded. Definitely. Like proper, and then, and then you had a, a wee idea, which was to actually for her to introduce each one. Yeah, to be fair, that came it, that came from an album that we did as Mr. McFall's Chamber um, um, with Michael Mara. And essentially, we'd done this tour with Michael Mara, the absolutely wonderful um, Dundee poet and singer-songwriter. And it was such a joy to do that tour. Uh, it was a couple of weeks around the Highlands and Islands. And... Um, we recorded every single gig, because there was about 10 gigs, I think. And we recorded them all and made a live CD out of them. And I remember at the point where we, it was going to um, production, um, there was um, there was a, there was talk about how to do it. And, we're, and what I, I remember saying, it's I loved, the thing I loved about all those gigs were his introductions, because they were um, pitch perfect every time it was, it was comedy um it was touching all these all these introductions so we ended up um i i well totally insisted that those introductions went into the cd and everyone agreed and so yeah and for me that's one of the my favorite bits of that album are those introductions so i said to mara louise you must must do a little introduction to just to explain who who the people are and you know the story behind just the, who the child is that you've written a song for. Because each lullaby has got, you know, there's like the one for for Amber, I think, and she was born on a super moon, I think. And so there's like it, everything from the artwork through to the way that the music is written all ties in with that. So, and it's, yeah. it's it's really lovely. And it's so much part of the music. It's not. So it, whoever's listening, it helps to have a bigger picture because the music's only one little bit of it. Yeah. But if you have the backstory, and then you understand why the words are there, and just actually even just to hear Mary Louise talking, um, talking us through what they are, it's, it's just exceptional. So but but her mother that. was really, um, my granny Margaret Cumming, my mum's mother, was brilliant at spoken word. She did amateur dramatics. She did poetry reciting she was great on the Burns poetry and she she had loads of things off by heart and she's passed that on to, to mum and also mum's uh, wee sister Kirsten so yeah um, I think Kirsten and my mum used to do like um, 
they used to do a wee duo together. They're quite they a double act, weren't they? Even just socially, they're yeah, quite a double act. Yeah, they're called No Spring Chickens. <laughs> and they got five stars at the Edinburgh Festival. Aww. And uh, it was all lots of spoken word, and there were loads of really well-planned introductions and lovely bits of poetry and stories. So that was always woven into it. So it made perfect sense for it to be actually... It made perfect sense to have those those um, bits of spoken word in amongst it. Uh, and it kind of flows like an album. So, you know, if... if if your child is not sleeping, you know, get a CD player on, put it in the room, put Lullaby Nana on, and like see if they get as far as track five. <laughs> out for it, out for the count. So growing up, there was always loads of music in this house. My mum would be teaching piano and harp and singing in the sitting room uh, as we were running around the house playing. And my brother Fergus would be practicing the piano or the pipe band drums and Finley would be listening to folk songs and Woolstone up the stairs and all that. Um, and we'd have house keelies and my granny would make us all do our turn. <laughs> right, you do your Mozart that you're learning. You're like, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's always like, it, there was always these kind of, there's always music in the house and mum always had this interest in composition. So um, it made it for me like I love writing music now and I think for me it made it like you know oh let's instead of not just like let's do a painting or you know if you're going to create something so that you could actually make up a piece I remember sitting and you know playing a, a piano piece like playing all the black notes and mum going oh that sounds good and all this kind of stuff and I wrote a tune well actually mum wrote it really but I wrote a tune when I was about 15 or 16 and um yeah, it was called Farewell to Strath's Bay for a friend and she helped me write it all out. This wasn't like a school homework or exercise, this was me just doing something I wanted to do in the house. So I feel very lucky um, to have that, helping me with the chords and the melody and, and all that.